Eric the Car Guy recently made a video on how to install a high intensity discharge headlight retrofit kit. After he made it, he got quite a lot of flack in the comments from people who think that these kits are, well, impossible to be done right. Well, I was originally one of those people, but after I saw that video, I decided to try and order the kit, the same one that he was given by Motor Fiend. I didn't actually order the same kit because my car is a 2009 Civic and it has separate high and low beam bulbs. So this is a slightly different kit, however it is from the same company. Now Eric the Car Guy did do a response video where he talked about the various things that people were upset about and how he had a way around them or how they just weren't true. However, the one thing that he didn't show was a side-by-side -side comparison of the halogen and HID lights. So today for you, I have a partial install of my Civic with the driver's side headlight already converted to HID and the passenger side to halogen. I'm going to show you how they look in comparison and also show you the beam patterns and how they really are exactly the same. For this comparison, I have the engine running so that way the system voltage is to where it should be, which is about 14 and a half volts. The reason why I have this is because the halogen lamp's brightness will be greatly affected depending on whether or not the engine is running. So this is a comparison of the HID bulb, which is on the right, and the halogen lamp on the left. Now as you can see, the HID bulb appears brighter, and some of this is because of the fact that it's a little foggy out right now. But, I think you'll notice that the main difference is really just color temperature. I can't tell how easily you can see this in the video, and in fact it may be overexposed, but the beam pattern as you stare into the bulb itself, or into the headlight itself, appears exactly the same between the two headlights. Whether or not this is the case could be up for debate, however I think it's clear that while the driver's side headlight is brighter, it doesn't appear to be too much brighter. Now one thing I'll do is I'll take the camera out of focus. Now if I take the camera out of focus you can see that really it's not all that brighter from this distance. What I plan on doing is I'll put some pictures that I've taken to with a lower exposure so that way you can see the difference better. But the other thing that I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. First I'll refocus. And I'm going to move below the vertical cutoff. So that way we can compare when each light gets brighter. So you can see the vertical cutoff is pretty much the same between the two bulbs. I would say the cutoff is a little more pronounced on the halogen bulb. But, and this is my main point, if we're this, if we're below the cutoff, the HID bulb is considerably brighter. But if we're above the cutoff, it's not much brighter. So here are some close-up shots of the headlights. The headlight on the left is the halogen and the headlight on the right is the high intensity discharge. As you can see, the HID light does have more glare. However, in this situation, we do have to account for the fog that's in front of it. The point of these pictures is to show how the beam pattern is the same. You'll notice that the pictures get progressively darker. I use the exposure control of the camera to take very underexposed images. This allows you to see the beam pattern clearly. In this image, you can see that the beam patterns produced by the two bulbs are nearly identical as you stare into them. In a moment, I'll take you to a shot where the car faces a garage door and we can actually look at the beam patterns as they appear on an object. One thing that I think is good to use as a reference point is the side marker lamps. If the HID kit were much brighter than the halogen lamp, it would probably be hard to see the side marker lamp because it would be obscured from the glare of the bulb. However, you can clearly see the side marker lamp in this situation. All right, now this is the most important point I have to make here. If we look at the beam cutoffs between the two bulbs, the driver's side actually appears to be slightly lower than the passenger side. Now in many cases the headlamps are actually focused this way. But I have the car on a surface that's level compared with this garage door and you can see... Now before you all go and think that I'm crazy, let me explain something. The bluer light of the high intensity discharge bulb is biasing my camera's exposure upward. 
Basically, the camera is overexposing everything here. You'll notice that I'm pointing at the beam cutoff of the halogen bulb. I'm about to point to the beam cutoff of the HID bulb. Now you'll see that where I'm pointing does not look like the cutoff in this video, but indeed I was pointing to the actual beam cutoff. I don't want this image to mislead you into thinking that the beam patterns are quite different, because in reality they were virtually the same. You can see that the glare pattern above the vertical cutoff is pretty much the same between the two, and I'll show that later. The point on the halogen bulb is actually above the same point on the HID. Now, we have this area of glare here, which is indeed more than what we see on the halogen. However, you can still see there's a pattern of glare in this area. So if you were to ask me, the beam patterns appear unchanged. And here's something else that I will do. I'll stand in front of each headlight so we can look at them independently. First, I'll stand in front of the HID bulb. So, this is what the beam pattern looks like of the halogen bulb. You can see that it is not perfect. It's not a perfect cutoff at all. Now I'll move over to the halogen bulb and we'll see what the beam pattern is of the HID. So the HID bulb appears to be almost exactly the same. In fact, if you look at the patterns that are above the cutoff, the patterns in the light almost look similar. Let me go back to the HID. See how you've kind of got those rings around it? Well, the pattern is the same between the two. One thing that I think would be very important into keeping these more close to original specifications is to keep the actual lenses of your headlights clean. If the lenses are dirty, you're going to have more scattered light, and the higher color temperature of the high intensity discharge bulbs biases more scattered light. However, I think when you see this comparison, you'll see that not all HID kits are bad for other drivers. In fact, this kit that was recommended by Eric the Car Guy, well, not exactly recommended, but the kit that Eric the Car Guy installed, I think is close enough to the original headlight beam pattern that these should be considered street legal. Now, they are not technically legal in terms of federal Department of Transportation standards, but depending on the state that you live in, federal DOT standards may not need to be followed. So, I hope this video was helpful to you, and please don't get upset that I am for HID in this instance. I think that this kit is a good kit, and if you wanted to use it, would actually work well with your vehicle. As I showed you, the beam patterns look exactly the same. Yes, the bulb is a little brighter, and yes, it is a little harder to look at, but it is certainly well within the parameters that I feel are acceptable for your headlamps. Now, I'd like to point out that I do understand people's concern. Right here I have, next to each other, the original 9006 headlight bulb and the new HID retrofit bulb. I have them both in the protected plastic cases that the HID kit came with, and I'm just going to keep them in for making this video. So, as many of you know, a halogen headlight bulb has a filament in the middle. And you can see it's a coiled coil, and basically it just gets so hot that it starts glowing. That's basically how incandescent light bulbs work. Now the high intensity discharge light is different in that it has an arc tube on the inside. There is no filament. The way these work is there's a high voltage spike that creates an arc between these two contacts and that arc causes various metals inside of it to start emitting light. Once they vaporize they start emitting various frequencies depending on the metal that they are. Now the reason why many of these HID kits are just poorly done is because maybe the arc tube isn't lined up correctly with the filament. Well, if we put these two side by side, you can see that the arc tube is pretty much exactly in the same place as the filament. Now this bulb, I can't tell if I have them lined up exactly perfectly, but they look to be in exactly the same place. Now some people point out that the light distribution from the arc tube is not the same as a filament. A filament will only glow where the filament is. However, on this side there is a metal piece here that actually, believe it or not, and I checked this before I installed the bulbs, if the metal piece is in the way of the arc tube, you cannot see any of the light coming from the arc tube. You can just barely see kind of like a halo around it. Well, this is a glare shield that helps keep the light pattern the same from the original halogen bulb. As you saw earlier, the light pattern is indeed exactly the same. So, while I agree that many HID kits are very bad, and in some cases, 
they really should not be used. I think that this kit from Motor Fiend is a fine example, and if you stick to either 5000K or below, where it is a true white, I don't think you will have any problems with law enforcement, even if these lights are technically illegal in your area. However, obviously, I can't be held responsible if you decide to install these from my advice and get a ticket from your local law enforcement. This is just my opinion. Now, I have a theory as to why some HID kits are particularly bad, and I think it may not necessarily be the kit itself. If you look at most modern cars, the headlight design is such that the actual plastic part of the lens is perfectly clear. The only thing that directs the light from the bulb is the silver reflector located behind it. In a lot of older vehicles, the lens itself actually is an optic lens. Oftentimes it would be a Fresnel lens where it has various vertical stripes in it that help direct the light. It's my theory that these HID kits, when used in older vehicles with the Fresnel lens set up, the light gets scattered far more than in vehicles with a reflector set. So, perhaps this is what the cause is of the drivers who have particularly bright headlights after they've done an HID install. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that many of the headlight retrofit kits that you see done are actually much higher color temperatures than should be done. Now the reason I say this is because if you go above 5000K, which is what these kits are, instead of having a pure white light, you're actually having a light that's biased towards blue. Some kits are such a high color temperature that the light is even biased towards purple. Now the problem with these lights is that you actually don't get a full color spectrum and your visibility will actually be limited. And what's more, the headlights tend to look even more dazzling to other drivers, since blue light is technically what gets scattered the most in things like dust and rain and fog. If you stick to 5000K or below, and 5000K is indeed what the headlight kit is in this vehicle, you will actually have a pure white light that will be the most useful at night. That's the reason why I wanted to install this kit. I wasn't concerned with the looks of my vehicle as much as I was concerned with the performance of the headlights. I feel that many people who install these simply install them because they look good. While if you install above 5000K, maybe you think it looks good, but I have a feeling that a lot of other drivers very much disagree with you, and you're also not doing yourself any favor by actually limiting the visibility you get from your headlights. So I hope this video was useful to you in determining whether or not an HID kit is a good idea for your car. I think that given the right car and the right reflector assembly, some HID kits can be very good and actually match the beam pattern of the original stock bulb just like this kit does. What I would recommend is if you purchase an HID kit, try to purchase one that you know is good. This one from Motor Fiend is indeed very good. I'm going to post links in the description to Eric the Car Guy's original installation video as well as to the website where you can purchase these kits. Anyway. If you think that HID kits are always bad, well, I think this is a perfect example of a situation where they are not. Anyway, I'm Alec, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to ask any questions in the comments, but, and since I realize this is such a heated topic, please be open for discussion instead of yelling at other people and calling them names. As I said, I was originally someone who really disliked people who do HID retrofits, but since I saw Eric the Car Guy's video and got this kit myself, I now know they can indeed be pulled off quite well.